Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about aliasing artifact, or we know what's also known as wrap artifact. So we're going to talk about how this artifact actually comes to fruition and some remedies for it as well. So if we were to go ahead and draw a person's head, and my goal here is to scan their brain. So if I go ahead and I create a field of view, right, I've got a, a field of view that I put around this patient's head. I've got a phase encoding direction. Right. So we got a phase encoding direction going across our image in this fashion. And now my goal is to go ahead and encode this image. I need a few things before I do that. Number one, I need to activate a gradient across my image in the phase encoding direction so I can encode in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what's going to happen is it's going to change the precessional frequency of hydrogen across my image. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is activate a gradient across my image. And what that does is it changes the precessional frequency of, of hydrogen. So hydrogen exposed to a weaker gradient are going to precess slower than hydrogen exposed to a stronger gradient. All right? So I'm going to try to draw this. All right, so it's going to get faster and faster and faster. So when we look at this image and I'm trying to encode it, this is what I'm trying to do. But what we don't realize is this gradient is activated across our image. All right? I'm going to go ahead and look at this frequency and try to make sense of it and encode it. I need to follow a rule called Nyquist's theorem, where we have to sample two times our maximum frequency. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. I'm going to sample two times that maximum frequency. I need to represent each of these hills and valleys. That's essentially what I'm trying to do. There's a hill and valley in each frequency. So I need to sample two times each frequency so I can show and reproduce those frequencies. All right, and if I connect these dots, I replicate this frequency fairly nicely. But like I said, this gradient is activated across our patient. So this gradient is actually getting stronger across our patient, which means frequencies outside my field of view are precessing quicker. All right. So if I use that same Nyquist's frequency, that same sampling frequency, and I try to sample frequencies outside of my field of view, I'm going to go ahead and encode them slightly different, incorrectly. And this almost looks like this frequency over here. Mm -hmm. right. I'm, I am sampling slower than the maximum frequency over here, which is replicated incorrectly in my image. It looks like something over on this side of my patient. So when I'm scanning my patient, and if I don't account for this extra tissue outside of my image, it's going to be encoded on the other side of my image as wrap. All right, so then I get a wrap artifact in my image. To remedy this, we can do many different things. The first thing we can do is increase our field of view. Right, that also reduces our resolution, which is less desired. We can use something called oversampling or no phase wrap and sample outside of this field of view in the phase encoding direction and account for some of these tissues, so they're not encoded in our image. Finally, we can also put a saturation band across our image in this direction. So I can just put a saturation band over the nose and remove that from my image, and it will not be encoded in my image. All right, that's essentially aliasing artifact, or what we call wrap artifact. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.